طول عمري فكرت انه بايماني بالمسيح انا باش نرفض عائلتي بلادي وثقافتي طول عمري انا امنت انه المسيحيين يعبدوا في ثلاثة آلهة انا طول عمري امنت انه المسيح عمره ما مات على الصليب انا فكرت انه يكفي انك انت تكون مسيحي لكن مش لازم تطيع انا كشخص طول عمري فكرت انه بما اني انا تخلقت مسلم فكرت انه ايضا انه الاسلام هو الطريق الوحيد وما عنديش حتى خيار اخر في الدنيا انا فكرت انه الكنيسة بنية انا فكرت انه وقت اللي يكفي انه نمشي المكة هذا يبش يخليني مغفور من كل الخطايا والذنوب متاعي انا طول عمري فكرت انه رسالة المسيح هي لليهود ومش للبقية العالم الكل طول عمري نفكر انه ما عنديش ضمان للخلاص انا ديما نفكر وامنت انه انا لازم نعيش بطريقة معينة حتى انه نولي مقبول عند ربي انا ديما نفكر ونآمن انه رحمة الله باش تكون موجودة في حياتي انهارت اللي اعمالي الحسنة تكون اكثر من سيئاتي انا امنت طول عمري انه قيمة المرأة في الدنيا هذه ديما اقل من الرجل انا طول عمري نفكر انه الله يمتحن فيه طول عمري فكرت انه الله ما هوش قريب مني انا يظهر لي الانجيل محرف انا طول عمري كنت مفكر في هذه الامور لكن الان انا ما نؤمنش هكاكا Good morning. My name is Rashid. I was born and raised in Morocco to a Muslim family. My dad is an imam, equivalent of a pastor. He taught me the Quran since I was four years old. I didn't know anything about Christianity except what Islam taught me. And one day, on a radio program when I was 12 years old, was my first time to hear the gospel message, the Jesus of the gospel, not the Jesus of the Quran. We have a different version. And since then, my journey started. It was four years of correspondence courses that changed the course of my life. Jesus changed my life when I was 16 years old. Gave him my life, and I started since then thinking how to reach my Muslim brothers and sisters. I didn't know what to do. Of course, I'm trying to summarize the story. I went through a lot of hardship, a lot of hard moments, a lot of intense, a lot of suffering even with my family members, even with my dad, my brothers, my mom, my cousins, even with my own country. I had to leave a beautiful country like Morocco and live, and live abroad until today I cannot go back to Morocco. So God gave me a ministry after that because I came to a radio program And I believe that media is a powerful tool that God can use to bring Muslims to him. So I started with others thinking how to use it. Later on, it was satellite TV and internet and YouTube and all the social media outlets. And God led me to do a program, a live program that I do weekly. 
I started 2007 doing it. It has been eight years. Every Thursday night, it's 90 minutes, a live call-in program. It's prime time in Egypt and Middle East where people can call and debate. And I challenge them about Christianity and Islam. I compare both religions since I know both of them. And I give them what I choose, the alternative, Jesus Christ as a savior. And I have seen many coming to Jesus Christ since 2007 through this program. It's called Daring Questions. Do you dare as a Muslim to ask bold questions about your faith? Do you dare to question your faith or you just follow your parents? And I also challenge Christians so many times. Do you dare to ask questions? Do you dare to start asking real questions that can change your life and the life of others? I have seen, I have seen thousands giving their life to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ asked us to get out of our comfort zone and start speaking and telling his story. Well, I'm just, just going to show you a, a short clip of what I do every week with other colleagues. It's, it's what you see on the news is one face. But there is so much going on that even us who are in the field, we cannot follow every detail. It's overwhelming. You see killing. You see a lot of evil on TV. You see ISIS. You see bombing here and there. You see heads cut. You see everything you can imagine. The most evil things, even burning people alive. But you don't see the other side of Muslims. Many of them are weeping on their knees. Many of them are searching for God. Many of them are sick and tired. Many of them are asking why God allows this. And they need answers. Many of them, they say, this is all, all what we have. Do we have another chance? Do we have another alternative? Well, we tell them, yes, there is Jesus. There is the God of love. There is the God who can change your life. You don't have to live that. You don't have to go through that if we embrace Jesus Christ. So I'm going to show you a short clip to show you what's going on on the other side. The Lahi, we are the harshest towards the Kufar. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> نعم 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 امين الرب يبارك حياتك المسيح العظيم نعم اختي ولكن يعني انا شايفه انه الالم يلي تركته فيك الطفوله ورؤيتك للعذاب يلي تعذبته جدتك وزوجتك يعني ما زال عم يحفر بالقلب فعلا اختي انت طلعتي الاوجاع الالام ذكنتيني بالالام الشديده اللي كنا نعانيها بسبب هالدين هذا الاجرامي 
بصراحه غيرت حياتي آه شكر الله هو اللي خدمنا كنا احنا ادوات كنخرج عند الناس وكنتسائل عند المسلمين صحابي جاوبوا لي على هذه الاسئله ولا احد يبغي يجاوبني واللي يزعل مني واللي يشتم واللي يصب كنت ارهابي وانسان مجرم وكنت اتمنى ان افجر نفسي ومتدين و... و... وكثير من هذه الشغلات وال... وال... وتنورت بسبب طبعا قناتكم حب المسيح اختي قراءه الكتاب المقدس وال... والحب حب المسيح و... وبعدي عن هذا الدين الذي كان يعلمني القتل والدمان والذبح انا اثرى انسان على وجه الارض نشكرك لاني استلمت المحبة استلمت الفرح استلمت السلام استلمت طول الأنا استلمت قمار الروح القدس أرجوك يا رب أنك تفتح قلبي أرجوك أنك تفتح قلبي أنا أطلق يا رب كل الناس يلي أساءوا لي من حياتي أنا أطلق كل الناس اللي أساءوا لي في حياتي ملاني بحبك؟ وببركاتك وبنورك يا رب وبقداستك أنا اليوم حر يا رب Praise God for what He is doing among Muslims. I'm going to ask a question. Why we see evil? Why we see people killing other people? Why they are doing it? What shaped their worldview? What made them think they are doing something good for God? Some of them are very sincere. They are very devout. They are willing to die for it. Why? Something shaped their worldview. It's the way how you see God. It shapes your worldview. Or even godless. Atheism. If you start with a notion there is no God, everything in your life will be shaped around that. And if you start with a notion of there is a God, and what kind of God, every literal thing in your life will be shaped around that. The way how you see yourself, the way how you see your neighbors, the way how you see your society, the way how you see your kids, your family, and you name it. So my worldview was shaped since I was a kid with a picture of a God an image shaped through Islam. My dad was a main figure that taught me a lot about this God, the Muslim God, Allah. So many people, they ask me so many times, do we worship the same God as Muslims? Well, the answer is not that simple. So I say yes and no. Yes, if you are talking about a creator, who created all of us. Muslims believe the same thing. If we believe in a God who is merciful, Muslims believe that God is merciful. If we believe in a God who is going to judge us at the end of the day, Muslims believe that too. But when it comes to other attributes, we're totally different. Sometimes it's the opposite. So today I'm just going to show you what changed my life? The image of God changed completely when I came to know Jesus Christ. So my worldview changed. And I started seeing everything different than when I was a Muslim. So I called it the God I knew. So my message today is the God I knew. But I'm going to start with a verse. <clears throat> Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Think about this. You will know the truth. You will know the truth about God. And this truth will deliver you, will set you free from an image that probably made you a slave 
or uncaged you or put you in a cage or in chains. And I believe my Muslim brothers and sisters are like that because I was one of them. I can feel what they are doing. I can see it. My parents are still Muslims. I had many fights with my dad about this topic. So you can see there is a huge thing that leaves Muslims as they are and they do what they are doing. Some of, not all of them are the same, by the way. Some of them are very devout and some of them are secular, like Christians. They are nominal Muslims. But they have a worldview shaped through the image of God. So the God I knew has 99 names. They call them the most beautiful names. Allah of Islam has 99 names. One of them is the most gracious, the most merciful. You will find all kinds of names. The judge, the just. But you will not find love as one of his names. And that makes Christianity so different than Islam. The God I knew, he's the most high. He's at the seven, we believe there are seven layers of heaven. So he's above the seventh layer. The most highest place you can get. And we are here on earth. He has no relationship with us. He's just there. And we have to worship him. We have to bow down. Why we do it as a Muslims? Because we believe the most you distance yourself from him, the more you get closer to him. So the distance has to be bigger. And that's why they reject the incarnation. That's why they reject Jesus Christ as described in the gospel. He cannot be divine because God cannot lower himself to us. He cannot come to us. It's impossible. He's the most high. He can do whatever he wants. This God, the God I knew. He doesn't have to stick to his attributes. He can even cheat if he wants to. The God I knew, he created us for one reason. And only one reason. To worship him. So we are here... As Muslims, we believe that we are here just to worship him. And that's the only thing he created us for. The God I knew, he created even evil to test us. He created cancer. He created death. He created earthquakes. He created every evil you can think of. Because he wanted to test us. And that makes him very different than the God of the Bible. He guides whomever he wants, and he leads astray whomever he wants. So he can lead me to do wrong, and he can lead another person to do good. And at the end of the day, he's going to judge me because I did bad, and he's going to lead the other person or reward him for doing good. And you should not ask why. He is God. He can do whatever he wants. But I didn't know the God of the Bible I didn't have a clue about him. I didn't know the God of the Bible, but when I came to know him, I found out his love. The one name I was missing in Islam, his love. That changes completely everything. That changes the game. The God of love loves everybody. He loves everybody. Not only that, he left his glory to come down for me, for us. That changes completely everything. He's not high there. He came here. The God I didn't know, he can do whatever it takes to save. He goes looking for people, as my brother mentioned. He goes looking for me in a small village. He reaches me through a wave, a radio wave. 
the God I didn't know, he created us to have a fellowship, not just to worship him, to have a relationship. The God I didn't know, he never created evil. It was not part of his plan. It's our choice, our free will that brought evil to this world. The God I didn't know, he wants all to be saved. He doesn't lead one to be astray, and he doesn't lead one to do good. He wants all of us to be saved. The God I knew back then as a Muslim, he made me think that I'm just a slave. You can't be a son of God in Islam. The most you can get is being a slave. And you should ha be happy for that. And that's why they reject, or Islam rejects, the notion of being sons and daughters of God. And he rejects even the notion that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Because that doesn't exist in Islam. The God I knew, he made me so scared of him. I never felt secure. As a child, my dad taught me how to bow down, how to do the prayers, the five prayers. And he said, if you do anything wrong, God will not accept it. He will reject it. And when you see him at the end, he's going to judge you for that. So I was always scared, probably I did something wrong. I'm not perfect. And sometimes I forget the time when I should pray. I should pray at noon, for example, and I was playing soccer or anything. And I come back and I'm looking, I missed the prayer. He's going to punish me. He's going to punish me. So many Muslims in the world today are, leaving, are living in fear because they are so scared of the image of God they have. You fast Ramadan 30 days and you are afraid. Probably you said something. Probably you did something wrong. And he's going to judge you for that. So I never felt secure. I always imagine him so high, watching me, sending angels around me, counting my mistakes. So when I see him, I will have a book that have all my sins in front of me. Imagine that image, you have it all the day, 24 hours around you. What kind of person you will be? The God I knew He made me full of hatred toward non-Muslims. How I saw non-Muslims. I used to ask my dad about Christians and Jews. I said, no, 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 no. They are going to hell. I said, why? And you should not love them. I said, why? He said, because God hates them. He hates them? Why he created them then? You have no answer. Well, they went astray. They, are now no, they, are, they didn't choose Islam. So God hates them. So when you see ISIS killing a person, they're not really enjoying killing. Or they're not monsters. They were created like that. Something shaped their, their mindset. So they see God hating the infidels, why they should love them if God hates them. Their existence is like their non-existence. Their blood is cheap. God hates them. So it's my duty as a servant of God to eliminate them. Why they are here. So it comes from a worldview. It doesn't come like that. He made me repeat rituals as a robot. So I used to pray in a certain way, to a certain direction every day, five times. I almost repeat the same things every day. So there is no new things in the prayer. There is no communication as we do as Christians. It just comes as 
a robot. You do it like that every day, a routine. And you become numb. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a duty. You do, you do it every day. Otherwise, he will punish you if you don't do it. The God I knew, he made me see others as inferiors. I saw you guys as inferiors. Because Muslims are the best nation. That's how I was taught. That's what the Quran taught me. We are the best of the best. And the others are lower. And that's why when you see a fighter, a Muslim, an Islamic fighter, he looks down at other people who are not Muslims. They are inferior. We are the best because we have the last prophet, we have the best book, we have the best language, we have the best everything. So we are going to rule the whole world one day. And we are going to make everybody submit and be or accept Islam or he's going to die. Going to make everybody convert to our religion because it's the best religion. The last one. That's how we saw everything. We have glasses. We see the world through them. But the image of God that I didn't know was totally different. He told me that I am a son. I'm not a slave. And I, call him, I can call him in the prayer, Father, Daddy. What a huge difference. And I'm, a, I'm not afraid he's counting my sins every day. He's my daddy. He's watching over me. He loves me. I'm his son. And even if I do mistakes, he's going to forgive me because he's my daddy. He made me feel safe. The God, he's watching over you, guiding you, taking your hand, leading you. It's not the God who is there watching you. And if you do a mistake, you will be in a lot of trouble. The God I didn't know, he made me love everybody, including my enemies. It's a huge difference. My enemies, I couldn't grasp that. The first time I read it in the gospel, the gospel of Matthew, I was, no. Because I'm not used to it. No. I reject to love my enemies. I said, no, you have to love your enemies. And now I have enemies who hate me. They want to kill me. But God asking me to pray for them and love them. And so many times they call me on air and they spit on me. And I just smile and I say, hey, you just spit on your phone, not on me. <laughs> I love you, brother. It's a huge difference. The God I didn't know asked me to, he asked me not to repeat rituals, but to have a fellowship, to stay in touch with him. It's a huge difference. The God I didn't know he made me see that we are all equal. There is no one inferior and no one superior. We are all sinners need salvation. It's a huge difference. The God I knew wanted to kill me if I stopped praying. Do you know that the punishment, if you stop praying in Islam intentionally, you are to be killed. All the four schools agreed on that. They give you an option to repent. And if you don't, that's it. The God I knew wanted to cut my hand if I steal from here. And starting from one egg and a bath. So if I steal, Two dollars, my head, my hand can be cut for that in Islam. And that's what ISIS actually is doing now in the areas they control. The God I knew wanted to stone my mom or my daughter or my wife or my sister if she sinned. 
to death. And I have seen videos where a father stoning his own daughter because his God asked him to do so. The God I knew wanted to cut my head if I leave him. Now I'm an apostate. And some Muslims are looking for me to kill me because I brought shame to the Muslim nation because I left Islam. You cannot leave Islam. If you leave him, he'll kill you. My image changed when I came to know Jesus Christ. The God I didn't know says he's at the door knocking. If I stop praying, he's knocking. It's a huge difference. He doesn't want me to be killed just for stopping prayers. He forgives a person when she repents. He also said to the woman who sinned, go and sin no more. The religious people wanted to stone her, to kill her. But he said, just go and sin no more. The God I didn't know. If I leave him, let's say I leave him. I don't want him anymore. I'm mad at him. He stays at the door waiting for me to come back. So he can say, my son was dead. And he's alive again. He was lost and he's found. It's a totally different image of God. The God I knew as a Muslim made my dad against me. Now I'll tell you a small story here. I had many fights with my dad. And one day I told him, I was tired, I was sick, and that's it. I was, until when? I'm just going to keep fighting with my family, my society. I said, what's Islam ask you to do? He, was, he just looked at me. He was, he was so mad. He was yelling. He was saying, you brought my, my head down. You brought shame on us. Why you did this? And I said, why don't you do what Islam asks you to do? Say it. And he said, no. I said, say it. He said, you know, Islam asked me to kill you. I said, why don't you do it right now? Go ahead. I want to die. That's it. I'm tired. And you just looked at me scared. And he was like, no, I can't. I said, why? He said, I'm your daddy. I said, see? You have a heart. But your God doesn't have a heart. And that's why you see so many Muslims are good neighbors, are good people, are good friends. It doesn't make Islam like that. They just have a heart better than their God. They have, their standards are higher than their religion. The God I knew made my family reject me. I have an extended family. Many cousins, many uncles, all of them rejected me. Made my country persecute me. Made me run away, leaving everything behind. Made my life in danger all the time, even till now. I can't say where I live. I can't give my full name. And I keep a low profile wherever I go. The God I didn't know made me pray for my dad to get him back, to win him back. Made me win my sisters and brothers. Some of members of my family now are believers following Jesus Christ. He gave me a bigger family like you, even if I lost my extended family. Wherever I go, I find people like you. You are my brothers and sisters. What a wonderful family. Our Christian family. Made my runaway a blessing to many. I didn't know I would be doing a TV program. So when I ran away, God blessed me with a TV program. I said, I should have done it before. I should have run away before. 
And it told me that even if I die, I will be like Abel, who still speaks even though he's dead. My videos are all over YouTube, and I say to my brother Muslims, even if you kill me, YouTube will stay there. <laughs> it's a totally different image of God, a God of love who made me love everyone. We should be proud of our God. We should be proud of the God whom we know because he set me free and he set you free and he's ready to set everyone free. The God I came to know, he changed me completely and I can say proudly, he literally saved me. And I can read this verse, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So I'm just asking you to pray for Muslims, to pray for them so they can be free. Amen. Thank you, Brother Rashidi. Let's remain standing as uh, we conclude to, uh, this morning. Thank you for your message this morning, and I know it's your heart that as you proclaim that message of truth in terms of the ways in which God has touched your life, that you would want that to be true for all of us here this morning. And so any of you that as you've heard that message in God through his spirit has been touching your heart, we'd love to pray with you this morning. So come forward, talk to one of our prayer partners, and uh, we'd love to spend a few minutes with you. Let's Pray for Brother Rashid together as uh, we send him off and as we go off uh, into the remainder of our week. Father, we're grateful for the ways in which you have moved deeply in the heart and life of Brother Rashid. Thank you for his ministry that impacts hundreds of thousands to millions through the television and through radio and through the ways in which you're using him to change hearts and lives. Father, we thank you for the truth that through Jesus, you set us free. And when the sun sets us free, we are free indeed. And so, Lord, we pray that prayer for everyone here today, and we pray particularly as uh, we pray for Brother Rashid and his ministry, that you'll continue to bless his ministry, continue to protect him, continue to use him as a mighty force for good and for love across the Middle East and around the world. Father, we're grateful that we can be brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're grateful for this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.